In this video guys, we're gonna look at the butterfly spread, specifically the long call butterfly. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a warm welcome to you. If you're a subscriber, do appreciate your support. If you're not yet, maybe you'll consider subscribing if this video is useful to you. Okay, so we're looking at options trading strategies here, and we're just looking at different ways of making money from the markets. We kind of know long and short, and we've had a look at maybe some uh, calls and puts, buying calls, buying puts, if you look at some of the options and videos we've done on the channel as well. But what about if we think that the price is gonna stay the same? You know, we think at a specific point in time, you know what, the price might move up and down, but it's gonna be pretty much where it is now. How do we express that? How do we, money, how do we make money from that? So we construct what's called a long call butterfly. So we expect the underlying to not move much at expiry. How do we construct that? What happens at different expiry prices? Let's have a look. Well, the main thing to point out is that we've got limited upside with this type of deal, but we also have limited downside. So again, it's a commercial decision that we might want to make whether this is something that suits us or not. Perhaps we want unlimited upside for it. Perhaps we, um, although perhaps we may not be able to construct that just based on the fact that it's staying within a range, but let's say we don't want to have limited downside. Let's say we want to have unlimited downside, we want to create more profit. There are ways that we can adjust and tweak it. This specific one is that we're capping the risk, but we're capping the reward as well. So how do we construct it? So if we say that XYZ stock is currently trading at 40 bucks, the thesis again is there's no movement. It's going to stay where it is at expiry. So what do we do? So we decide to sell calls at the strike price. So the strike price, uh, $40, that's the current price, that's our thesis. And we sell two of those and we just get $400 credit for each. So it's currently trading at four bucks, 100 shares is one entre options contract. Don't forget the call gives you the right, but not the obligation to buy the underlying, i.e. the stock XYZ at the strike price at the expiry time in the future. So $40 call, it gives you the right to buy it at 40 bucks. That's going to expire worthless if it sits at 40 bucks or less. So we sell two of those. And we get $800 credit in for that because we're on the opposite side of that deal. We're selling that options contract. But to construct this spread properly and to cap our risk, because of course, if that went to zero, that's great. We make all that money. However, if it goes off into the stratosphere, we are stuck short these calls and are on the hook for a potential big loss um, for the buyer of these calls, who's obviously going to exercise it if the expiry is $400. He's going to say, yes, please, and you're on the hook for that. So we're kind of reducing the risk a little bit, but a little bit of a, a, of a takeaway of how much profit we can make and how much the deal is going to cost us. So that's the kind of core of it, if you like. Maybe that's not the textbook way of looking at it. That's the way I like to look at it, if that's where we're selling the calls. And then we're adding these extra layers in or extra legs in on the spread. So we're now buying one $30 call for 1100. You say, why is that so expensive? Because this is an in the money call option. We're currently trading at $40. This is $30. It's got $10 worth of value already times by the hundreds or thousands. And there's a bit of premium on it as well, uh, which is the hundred dollars as a $1 premium. So we buy the one, or we buy one $30 call and we buy one $50 call as well. And that's got $1 worth of premium, 100 shares, $100. So how much is that costing us? We're, it's costing us 1100 for that, pretty hefty. We're getting 800 back for the calls we sold, the $40 calls we sold. Okay, and now we're adding, uh, it's costing us another 100 bucks for that 50. So 1100 plus the 800 minus the 100 is 400. So it's $400 it's costing us to express this trade. It's a debit, we're not receiving any money for this. It's costing us money. Okay, so let's look at some examples of what might happen. So $40 at expiry, let's see what happens to the calls that we bought and sold. The $30 call that we bought, um, that's got some value, right? Because it's uh, the right to buy something at 30, it's currently trading 40, great. That's worth $10 multiplied by $100 shares. That's worth $1,000 to us, that's good. Uh, what about the $40 call? Well, it's worthless, the right to buy something that's at the price it is now, worthless. That's okay um, because we sold those, but forget about that, let's just see the actual value of the option. That's worth zero, fine. And uh, what about this $50 call? That's also worth zero because the right to buy something that's higher uh, than the current price is worthless. So it's worth worthless. So the value of those options is a thousand, that's great, but we paid 400 
dollars to buy the whole thing. So we get a thousand in, we pay 400 out. So we make 600, which is the most we can make. Exactly what we wanted, $40, it didn't move, perfect. We make that 600 because we're receiving all of this money that we got from these calls and we're making some money as well from these $30 calls. But don't forget, we had to pay a premium for those already. So if you think about this, it doesn't really make us any money on that because we $30 call at 40, it's worth $10, great, times by the 100, it's worth $1,000. Uh, we paid 1100 for it because we paid some premium. So we actually lost a little bit on that deal. So we lost that 100 on that. So we've made the 800 here, we lost the 100 here, lost the 100 here, because we bought those, those are now, that's now worthless. That's when it gives us this $600 profit. So that's okay, that's good, that's what we wanted. That's the best case scenario. What about $30? If it expires at $30, doesn't really work out for us. It goes down, expires at $30. Um, so $30 call, uh, what's that worth? It's worth nothing, right? The right to buy something that's currently trading at that price, worthless. What about the $40 calls? Again, they're worthless. And one of the $50 calls, again, they are worthless. Everything there is worthless. So basically, it's just costing us what we pay for it, which is the 400 bucks here. So we've lost 400 bucks. And you can see that no matter how low that now goes below 30, it's never gonna get any worse than that because you can't, the calls, when you're buying the calls, can't be worth any less than zero. They just can't be worth any less than zero. Um, and we've sold these calls, so these are all gonna be worth zero. So we get the max profit on this, but we also have the max loss on this and the max loss on this, which is the total, which is giving us the $400 loss. Okay, let's have a look at the upside now. The upside is in the stock expiring to the upside. Uh, $50, the stock expires at $50, what happens? Great, that $30 call we bought is rocking and rolling. That's worth 2,000. It's worth $20, 50 minus 30, the right to buy something at 50, that's, the right to buy something at 30, that's currently 50, 20 bucks times by 100, 2,000 bucks, whoopee doo. What about those $40 calls? Uh, yeah, well actually, if we're trading at 50, they're worth $1,000 each. Forget about what we pay for those now, but they're worth $1,000 each, that's worth 2,000. Okay, um, so how does that work out in the wash to us? Well, we've bought this $30 call for 1,100. It's now worth 2,000. So we've made $900 on the deal. Great, so we've made $900. What about these two calls here? Well, you know what? We sold those at 400 each. We're losing $600 on the deal on each one of those. So $1,200 we're losing on that. That's giving us minus $300. And don't forget, we've also lost the $100 on this, which is now worth zero. That's giving us our total of $400. So $300 from those two plus that $100 or minus $100 from that minus $400. You can see that that never gets any worse as well because the offset, they all offset each other no matter how high that stock price goes. But what about if we're somewhere in the middle? Let's say 35 bucks, what happens there? Let's run through this a little bit quicker now. The, what, the $30 call has got $500 worth of value. That's got no value because it's below um, the strike price or it's above the strike price, should I say. Uh, the or should I say the expiry price is below the call price. There's no intrinsic value to that options contract. Same with that $40 call, $50 call, 500, zero, zero. What does that do? Well, we've made 500 on this deal, but it's cost us 400 to take the trade in the first place if we work it all out in the wash. So we've made $100. So actually, you know, 35, we start to make something. And actually it's the same to the downside. How do we work out our break even point? Easily to work out a break even point is we look at a high strike price for the call option, so the $50 call. We take away the premium we paid, which forget about the 400, that forget it's times by 100. It's actually $4 what we pay for the option. 400 is the actual P&L that we worked out with one contract. So our break even price to the upside is 50 minus the $4 is $46. That is our break even price. And you can just about see that's about right because that's not symmetrical. It's not going to be exactly right because that's 600 and 400. If those were two equal, then you'd see that it would meet in the middle. And what about the downside? What's our break even on the downside? Well, we take the low call and we add the premium we paid for the whole deal. Again, we're adding the $4 onto that. It's $34. So our break even is $34. On the downside, our break even is $46 to the upside. If it stays in between that, 
then we don't lose any money. If it stays right bang in the middle at that $40, and you can see that's just $6 either side of it, then beautiful, we've made the full $600. So you can see the pros and cons of doing this type of trade. Um, if you expect nothing to happen, then the chances of it staying right bang in the middle are gonna be, you know, it's great, it's a big jackpot potentially for you. Um, maybe not necessarily these numbers, but you know, you, you can see how that could work in your favor. Um, you cap your downside, uh, you give yourself a little bit better than the iron condor strategy because you're not kind of having that plateau level, generally because you've got the tabletop kind of graph with the iron condor, it's gonna cost you more for the deal because you've got a wider range. This is more of a, you know, being more precise with it. Of course, you can spread this out because where you're buying these lower calls is how wide uh, or kind of the angle that this butterfly uh, spread trade will have. Anyway guys, that's the butterfly spread, specifically the long call butterfly, useful if you expect the underlying to not move much at expiry. Take care, whenever you're trading, bye-bye.